Recording has started. Okay, is my screen now? Uh, not the slide. No slide? Let me do it again. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yeah, yes, we can. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, hello everyone. So I'm Yang Zhou from University of Wisconsin Madison. Currently, I'm a postdoctoral research associate in, under the guidance of Professor Su Yang An. So, today, my topic is the data driven string stability analysis for commercial automated vehicles car following control algorithms. So, here is the agenda for today. So, to be no before that, to be noted, the research is still ongoing. So yeah, I would like to hear like the comments or have some discussions uh, all with respect to this material. So today's agenda that we have the introduction and then we'll describe the methodologies, which I think is a kind of interesting thinking. And I will also show some preliminary experimental results and then uh, have some discussions and further extensions based on uh, this like framework. So let's come to the introduction first. So uh, with the development of the automated vehicle, um, uh, which is enabled by the advanced sensing, advanced sensing and control technologies, the traffic flow is expected to have some like uh, unprecedented opportunities to enhance the traffic throughput, the enhance the stability as arrows. So, uh, as according to the SAE standard from the 2021st, that we there are like multiple levels of the automations from the no automations to the full automations. Well, uh, the full automation still is still mature enough, which is envisioned to be mature uh, in 2050. So uh, during this period, we'll experience the the several like the um, different level of automation and uh, partial automations. So uh, as a basic um, functions of the partial automations, the adaptive crew control, I believe it belongs to the level one to level two automations, helps the vehicles to, keep, to maintain a desired distance while keep the same speed with the proceeding vehicles. So, Due to these like uh, um, automations, there are multiple like field experiments recently conducted uh, all over the world. So, for example, there are some experiments uh, conducted in the Massachusetts, uh, in Georgia, in like uh, uh, Champaign, Illinois, Florida, and the uh, European Union for various uh, purposes of the traffic flow analysis under this partial automation. So among the all traffic phenomena, traffic oscillations has raised uh, wide attention due to its very related to the energy consumption, traffic throughput, and the traffic safety. So during the last decades, this phenomenon, the traffic oscillation, known as a stop and go, uh, has been widely analyzed for the traffic formed by the human-driven vehicles. There are uh, multiple types of approach such as the car following uh, symmetry by uh, Chen et al. 2012 and, uh, and 2014. There are also like the wavelength method, which applies like the wavelength analysis, try to understand the traffic oscillations by Zen et al. 2011, also like the describing function approach by Li et al. 2012. So on the other hand, for the theoretical designs that the um, there are also like some uh, researchers kind of uh, to guarantee the string stability, which is an important concept to guarantee the disturbance can be attenuated through the vehicular strings. Uh, and there is lots of like research, such as the Montano and Pinzo 2021st, and the Zoetel 2019, etc. 
So basically, they are trying to mathematically derive the sufficient conditions for the design automated vehicle control uh, to, to ensure that the disturbance can be attenuated. Well, this prevailing analysis uh, for the linear uh, car following controllers. So then, here is the question. So with the uh, in increasing maturity of the automation, we aim to try to understand how the commercial automated vehicles behave during traffic oscillations. And we want to try to have some like a comprehensive behavior understanding. So for example, given an arbitrary leading vehicle trajectories with uh, under traffic oscillations, how it will behave. And we will also try to answer the question that whether the commercial um, automated vehicle car following strategies not only as the ACC is string stable or not. So if it is not, in what condition it is string unstable and in what level it is string unstable? To answer these questions is very, very challenging because we don't know the what type of controllers that the commercial car manufacturers they apply. And we don't know uh, the spacing policy it adopted. Furthermore, we don't know the real detailed vehicle dynamics of the commercial automated vehicle. And so basically from the field experiments that we mentioned, that we can only have like a trajectory measurement. So how can we somehow get the flavor or have some understanding based on this trajectory level data? So especially for like the controllers, so in academia or industries, there are like various types of controllers out. They are all very welcoming. So for example, they have like the linear controller, which is like a very simple linear feedback or feed forward mechanisms to regulate the spacing and the speed difference. And also they have like the model predictive control and also like the deep reinforcement learning controls. So how can we understand the above questions for under this like a, a partial knowledge of the ACCs and, and uh, from the trajectories. This is super, super challenging. So one of the easiest ways that we can think about is to just to calibrate the uh, commercial automated vehicles, our foreign controls. So there are four steps, many, right? So firstly, we can assume a controller and based on the zoom controller, we can use the trajectories to calibrate the controllers, which was recently also conducted in academia. Based on that, to further uh, analyze the string stability, so like the uh, the the like traffic oscillation behaviors, they can also linearize the controller and conduct some like a linear stability analysis or string stability analysis for the commercial for the calibrated controllers. However, um, it, is, it is not that, that accurate and there are some errors may be introduced during this process. So as I mentioned earlier that we don't know the controller. So there could be like the model mismatch happen, which will severely uh, introduce the errors. So because they have different controllers, we don't know what it is. And it has a, may have the different, different spacing policies. For example, the constant time gap policies or the adaptive uh, uh, time gap policies or even like constant spacing policies. And also, we also need to somehow to linearize these controllers to all the only uh, fits for like the like an analytical or linearized controllers. And this two-stage algorithms may also introduce some error propagation because well, during the calibrations, then you may have some like, errors inside, while for the stabilities, then you also can introduce some errors. So that's why, so rather than like a model-based approach, so the calibrated like controller-based approach, so this research aims to seek a data-driven approach, which is more direct to answer the questions that I mentioned above. So let's come to the methodology. 
So before the detail of the control, uh, the detail of the methodologies, let me firstly uh, give some like preliminaries of the frequency domain behavior analysis. So which was like widely applied in traffic flow uh, theory analysis, for example, by Li and Ouyang 2011. So given a generic speed portfolio looks like this, we can somehow like decompose it into a domino part, with like a straight, straight line, and an oscillatory component, so which is normally formed by the sum of like a uh, uh, some of the sinusoidal or cosinusoidal uh, waves um, of different fre frequencies. So given this, like, um, so for this, like, frequency domain behaviors, that if if we just design the ACC controllers or ACC, especially ACC linearized controllers, that we can somehow define a transfer function, which is the Fourier transformation of the leading vehicles divided by the Fourier transformation of the following vehicles. By this like a concept of transfer functions, that we can somehow describe how the speed will amplify or what's a phase shift uh, for the during the traffic oscillations. So for example, these transfer functions of the coupling models, which can you can which equals to a magnitude of the transfer function times the angle of the transfer functions. Well, for example, let me give some like an illustrative examples of the concept. So given this is like a one oscillatory component of a certain frequency. So the magnitude of this transfer function describe whether it's the amplification of the sinusoidal or cosinusoidal waves and uh, and the angle of this transfer function describes how the sinusoidal or cosinusoidal waves will uh, shift. So in this sense, so if we design or with theoretically derived ACC controllers, we can all get these properties. And based on that, we can even conduct some theoretical analysis or derive the sufficient conditions for this like a linear linear controllers, we can define the H infinity norm of this transfer function, which is a, a supremum of the magnitude of this like transfer function norms. So if the supremum of this like magnitude transfer or magnitude of the transfer function over all frequencies is, is smaller or equals to one, then we call the system is screen stable. But that's only from the theoretical perspective. So, which means that when you design the controllers, for example, the Zo et al. or Gante et al., you can design all this like feedback and, I mean, feedback gains and the uh, constant time gap, you can all mathematically derive it. Well, in the, for the commercial automated vehicle, the commercial adaptive cruise controls, we don't know the model yet, right? So, and, and we don't know so whether it's these forms or these forms, or like the time engine constant, the constant time gap, we don't, basically we, we don't know it. So by this sense that we cannot directly or like mathematically analyze whether the commercial automated vehicles is string stable or not. So in this sense, so then we can think about like a data-driven approach, right? So Given this like leading vehicles, we can still do like, for example, do a fast Fourier transformation or Fourier transformation directly to the leading vehicle portfolios to decompose it into a different like sinusoidal and cosinusoidal waves of different magnitude. And we can also conduct the similar uh, maneuvers on the following vehicles um, speed portfolios. And we just divide it because by the definition, as long as this controller is linear. So given these thinkings that we can somehow try to get it from a data-driven way without knowing any knowledge of this, perhaps the exact design of the commercial ACC controllers. 
So there are like multiple ways of this estimation, though what I give is a very illustrative ways. So here, um, there are some like the uh, signal processing research gives like the best H1 estimator of this like empirical transfer functions rather just from the data perspective, which equals to the all of spectrum, the cross spectrum of the leading and following vehicles and divided by the all of spectrums of the leading vehicle uh, speed portfolios. So, and here is a data formula, and we call this like a empirical uh, transfer function as a frequency response function. So, uh, here I want to put some remarks here. So, we know this like a GI, J omega hat uh, is the empirical uh, transfer function, which is just an estimate of the theoretical transfer function without knowing and exact knowledge of the space and policy and design, uh, detailed design of controller. By this, like ways we can somehow circumvent the the knowledge or assuming any types of controllers or exact forms of the controller. So, well, how to smartly estimate this like um, uh, frequency response functions? Still, especially the all of spectrums and the cross spectrums still need some techniques. So here we just applied the, like the a widely applied Welch method to um, estimating. So basically the main idea is that given the all like a full measurement of the traject or speed portfolios, we divide it into several overlapping segments and we can we use like a window to conduct a, a Fourier transformation. And based on this like window Fourier transformations that we somehow average the, the each segment frequency domain behaviors to get the uh, auto spectrum on the, and the cross spectrums. So this maneuver is kind of like, uh, is aims to provide like the consistent estimation of the, of the auto spectrums or cross spectrums. So, so for example, so if you merely increase the measurement of the trajectories, you can only increase the resolution of the auto spectrums or the cross spectrums. You can never somehow to average it or, um, or uh, uh, so you cannot average it or to reduce the estimation errors. And so this process uh, is widely applied in signal processing, which is like a pro provide the constant, consistent estimation, reduce the estimation variance, and also it's more robust to the measurement noise and reduce some like spectral leakage effect. So that's how, I mean, normally we use this like thinking is to estimate the auto spectrums and cross spectrum. So, but as I mentioned that this, the above analysis is only theoretical reverse when the commercial ACC is uh, linear controllers. So we all know there are like a multiple analysis that uh, that's kind of like, that's only fits for like the nonlinear analysis. For example, the describing analysis functions, it may be more desirable. Well, this approach still needs like more knowledge of the controllers, such as what type of the nonlinearities and the nonlinearity boundaries. And another thing that I want to mention that, so though this one looks very simple and only valid for linear systems, well, for practice, it is still widely applied for nonlinear systems, such as like a robust robotics or SROs in like signal processing field, because they treat it as a fast linear approximations of the nonlinear systems. So in this sense, it still, it still holds and it's still practical for our analysis. So furthermore, so, we normally we don't we never run like one time experiments. Then we can we normally we run like a multiple experiments. So then based on that we can somehow to 
you apply some like a very basic statistics to get the empirical distribution of the frequency response functions by based on this like a multiple experiment. So in this way, we try to somehow to reduce the uh, estimation errors and the errors introduced by the measurement, uh, the sensor measurement. So then, so here I just give a very uh, illustrative, a very simple uh, examples based on like how we uh, analyze it or like or how we analyze of frequency response functions when the ACC is linear. So I would like to firstly give some like experimental results and then I will move on to the discussions and extensions since as I mentioned that the research is still ongoing. So for the experiments, so for, there are two like uh, sections. The first one is to is the synthetic database experiment since we somehow to since we apply the Welch method to estimate the cross spectrums and auto spectrums, we somehow need to tune the Welch method to find some parameters that are suitable for this uh, research analysis. And the second one is that the field data based experiments and where we apply the open ACC data conducted in the European. Uh, in Europe. So let's come, firstly come to the synthetic data-based experiment. So for the um, synthetic data-based experiments, is kind of like illustrate. Uh, is kind of like in intuitive. So firstly, we have a leading vehicle trajectories, and we can simulate um, a coupling model. Well, simulate the following vehicle trajectories based on a given car following models. And we add some like a synthetic measurement noise, uh, which is uh, where here I apply is a normal distributed like Y noise with 0 0.3 meter per second standard deviations. And based on the leading vehicle and following vehicle trajectories, uh, we use a Welch method to, to get the frequency response estimations. And furthermore, we can get some like empirical distributions of these frequency response functions and analyze the deterministic or the stochastic strength stabilities. Based on that, we compare with the, uh, the known uh, linear car following models to see uh, by this method, by the data driven method, how it deviates from the theoretical one. Since the car following model is linear, so we can theoretically derive one and we can make a comparison directly. And for the, uh, there are like multiple parameters for the Welch method that we apply here. So we apply the handling windows, so which is very suitable when the signal to noise ratio is kind of small. And here is like a detailed uh, Welch method parameters here. And we also conduct like a multiple scenarios with a different uh, control gains, the feedback uh, feedback gains for the speed difference, um, the uh, deviation from equilibrium spacing, speed difference, and accelerations. And we can also theoretically derive their H infinity norm. Uh, one is like, this is one which is a strict string stable, and another one whose H infinity norm is 1.03, which we treat, treat as a like, weakly string unstable. And uh, the last one is 1.11, which we treat as a string uh, unstable in an obvious way. And we adopt the linear controller by the Zo et al. 2019. And let's take a look on the experimental results. So, um, so the the so, so the measurement for each trajectory is, is one minute, and we conducted it for like 500 times. Um, so as you can see, uh, due to the arrows of the um, measurement, uh, we will have like a lot of uh, estimations of the uh, frequency response functions. Well, the each line is the is for one uh, set of trajectories. So here are the 500, and this is the first case, second case, and third case. 
So, and I just show the empirical 95% empirical upper bound and lower bound of the frequency response functions and the average of the response functions and compared with the theoretical one which can be uh, derived. So as we can find that uh, given the measurement noise, uh, which may happen in the real world I mean, field, uh, field test, it can still, this Bush method can still produce very consistent uh, result. There is almost, like, almost, you can almost find the overlapping of the uh, data driven one and, uh, uh, and the theoretical one. Well, you, but you still, because due to the measurement of noise, you can still have some like uh, regions for the um, for the empirical, what we call like free frequency response functions. So we can also conduct a, a string stability analysis in a probabilistic way, which is very intuitive. So in, on each frequency, by the definition, we we'll calculate the what's the probability over this frequency. It is string unstable, and we multiply apply it the String stability probabilities due to the in independent the the uh, the interdependence of uh, the behaviors over each frequencies and we can get the result. So for the first one, the theoretically string stable one, that we can get a very high probabilities that it is string stable. While for the uh, Weekly string stable one, a uh, weekly string instable one, we can get a relatively low string stability probabilities, which is around like a 10%. And for the very significantly string stable case, that uh, we can get that the probability is almost zero. So, as I mentioned, for linear controllers, this results or this this method demonstrate that our proposed method can act accurately distinguish the string stability and the instability case. And we can also identify which frequency domain that the ACC might be string unstable. And we can also uh, get the comprehensive understanding of uh, in which frequencies what uh, transfer function norms, basically how the oscillation will amplify or dampen. But that's only for the synthetic experiment. So then let's come to the field experiment. So the field, the field data that I used is the uh, open access data that collect, uh, that's collected by the McReady's at TL 2012. Uh, and what I apply is the ASTO zero, zero data, uh, ASTO zero test. So, and here are some uh, illustrative examples of how the trajectories and the speed portfolio looks like. And they have like a five, basically five types of like a different commercial or automated vehicles. And the total duration of the analysis uh, contains like 2.6 hours um, trajectory and speed. So due to like the uh, commercial sensitivity reasons, I will not tell. So uh, which vehicle it is, or uh, especially. The, their frequency domain behaviors. So then I apply the same um, procedures and the same uh, Welsh method uh, the, um, parameters to these like open access data, and we can find that the frequency domain behaviors of the commercial ACCs of different like manufacturers. So as we can find that. During the low frequency range, they are all very screen unstable, especially there's one which is an which is a SUV attempt to like amplify the uh, oscillations in a greater manner, and it can the amplification ratios can reach to 1.4, which is kind of like consistent of I mean our like intuition the SUV can further amplify the traffic oscillations. And we can also find that compared with a linear linear one, they also have some like a, a 
spring spring unstable spring instabilities over like a relatively high frequency range. So, because because the data is only measured in 0 0.1 second uh, resolutions, which means that our analysis range can only cover from 0 to 5 frequency hertz. So in this sense, I cannot get uh, further results uh, for even higher frequency range. So we also conduct like the probability analysis for, I mean, in which degree it will be string stable or not. Uh, as can be find that the, all the string stability probability will come to zero very sharply, which suggests that the all commercial ACCs are not string stable. I mean, from both from the deterministic or stochastic interpretations, and this findings is also consistent with uh, Gunter et al. 2020s. Well, compared with the Gunter et al., our approach reveals more detailed results in the frequency range uh, and in a probabilistic manner. So, yeah. Oops. So, yeah. So, but as I mentioned, uh, this approach is very like a simple. We already treat the commercial ACC uh, as a linear controller, even though we didn't utilize any knowledge of the how what's the exact structures or designs of the linear controllers. But I would like to have some discussions, and further extensions. Uh, so as I mentioned, that this is only a best linear time variant uh, controller approximations, though it's somehow valid. I mean, or widely applied for the nonlinear system analysis. So, so, but I mean, what if the commercial ACC is like MPC or DRL, basically is very nonlinear control law. So how can we still apply this framework to, to, to analyze, uh, analyze the frequency domain behaviors? And furthermore, so what, what will happen? So if it is the uh, uh, time variant control laws, for example, the multi regime control uh, and the control may vary during different like traffic scenarios. So what will this happen? So can our framework, our thinking, still applies to all these like uh, very complex scenarios? Actually, uh, the answer is yes. So rather than so rather than using like the frequency response functions, we can even I mean, analyze the generalized frequency response functions or like even nonlinear output frequency response functions uh, um, based on the framework that we have. So we can, for example, we can conduct like a Vatero series expansions to get the generalized frequency response functions for the nonlinear systems, even we don't know any knowledge is of these controllers. And for the um, time varying systems, we can also conduct the uh, vividly based frequency response functions. So we just need to simply change the uh, frequency response functions to uh, which is uh, equals to the all spectrums, uh, cross spectrums divided by all spectrums by Fourier transformation to a vividly, vividly based like all spectrums and uh, Across spectrums, by this like uh, some some degree extensions, this I mean this framework still applies. So um, as I mentioned, that the the research is still ongoing. So hence I I, I did uh, so before I give a detailed I mean interpretation of the experiments. So so let's end it here. Um, yeah, and if you have further like interest or Questions. We, uh, I'm very happy to talk in person. Um, that's it. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you, Yang. Thank you for the excellent presentation. Uh, for audience, if you have questions, you're welcome to type your question in the chat box, or feel free to unmute yourself and ask your questions. Uh, Yang, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, this is Suan from Chang University. 
And yes. uh, yeah, uh, my question is about your actually uh, your, your your I mean just about the function uh, I mean functional idea. And uh, the thing is, I, I think the significance and uh, also the the um, advance for your idea is you just like you use a data driven uh, data driven method to just uh, uh, simulate some kinds of uh, disturbance and input it in the, some kinds of uh, just our control system and see what what is the I mean to, to and see what is the response right what is the frequency yes. response. And uh, actually, the thing is, you need to make sure actually the the disturbance that you simulate is uh, almost the same or, or can cover all the scenarios. Actually, that's in the test. Uh, that's a very important or very, I mean, s serious problems. Uh, I mean, the simulated s scenarios cannot sometimes cannot cover all the all the situations, right? So my question is, how can you verify and your method can uh, just uh, can can simulate all the things, or just uh, it is useful to uh, or or it is it is uh, I mean it, or it is useful to simulate. I mean not not useful. It or it can cover at least in high percentage it will cover the I mean normal scenarios. Okay, that's a very very great uh, questions. Yeah, I totally understand your question. Yeah. So basically, so what we have is, uh, so we basically, basically we have like a, an estimate of these transfer functions. But your question is that, so what if the leading vehicle trajectories does not contain some range of the frequency? So how can we do it, right? So is this your question? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. So based on that, so that's why I mean, even in signal like signal processing, so we still we call the input excitations. Basically, we need to cover a wide range of the the input. In our case, it's a leading vehicle trajectories. We somehow want to the leading vehicle trajectories is very rich in the um the frequency domain range and the magnitude. So that's why I mean that's the main reason basically I choose the I choose the um, open ACC data because it, it is really really very and it also cons contains like a lot of like oscillations of different frequency range. But for sure, uh, uh, I mean compared with we can never compare with the very theoretical one because the theoretical one I mean is is derived from mass right. So it's very, I mean, it's, it's very straightforward and rigorous. Well, in our like a daily like estimations, we can use like, for example, use like multiple source of the data. Um, I mean, from the different um, field test to enrich these leading vehicles, uh, I mean, leading vehicle uh, speed portfolios. In this sense, we can better estimate the how what's a what's a frequency response functions uh, over each frequencies but as i mentioned that um, yeah it really depends on it also depends on the measurement resolutions and so since once the resolution is kind of like small you can only get a limited frequency range well the res resolution is kind of like big for example if you collect the data um, with 0 0.01 second resolutions, then you can basically get the, and have like a multiple, I mean, leading well go trajectories. Then basically you can get the frequency range from the zero to 50 Hertz. So in this sense, we can somehow, I mean, still estimate the, the frequency response functions, I mean, in a nice manner by like a multiple experiments and a higher resolution, like measurement, yeah. Alex, thank you. And uh, my second question is about, uh, I mean, the, the practice one. And uh, I totally agree with you that it, it, your method will work on the, I mean, nonlinear one. Uh, so it will contribute to the, a lot of controller today, uh, and uh, use it to test the, I mean the string stability. Uh, I, 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 
I totally agree with, with uh, this uh, applic applicability. But my question is about the some, something about the commercial use. You know, uh, in commercial in commercial vehicles, just like the ECC controller is something like uh, uh, software or uh, coding things input in the just like a black box, right? And yes. uh, th this test, uh, your method is just like a software test, just like you we, we input some, some something in the black box, and then we can uh, we we need to uh, see the response of from the input. But you you know in the real vehicle, it's just like a, the, the controller is composed with a lot of uh, mechanism things, just like a engine, just like the transmission, and uh, all these kind of things. And uh, in in the real world or in practice, how to use your measure to test uh, just like uh, ECC in, in a commercial vehicles? Just like I just give you a commercial vehicle here. I want to test the, the controller is uh, string stable or not. But uh, you, I mean, if you want to test that, you need to provide some scenario to let the real vehicle to run, right? And <laughs> yeah, 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 that's just about the practice. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the question. Yeah, basically, yeah, as, I'm, as you mentioned, that uh, it really depends on how you define the input and output. Basically, it's maybe it's not direct. I mean, it's not maybe it's not like directly re related to the string stability. Basically, you need to understand how the generalized like a uh, frequency response function looks like, and it really depends on the input and output. So maybe it's like a multi-dimensional other stuff actually also I mean fails into this like framework. Well, here I want to mention that uh, we only so in this in this analysis we mainly focus on the the speed like oscillations. Basically, we just need to mirror the speed and the, from the leading vehicle trajectories and the following vehicle trajectories. You can directly I mean mirror married during either you simulate it or, or from the real world experiments. It doesn't really matter the engines or the stuff because the data driven approach already treated as a black box. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but for sure, yeah, so this like a nonlinear system, string stability actually, because uh, I, I, I know you're also an expert or theory expert in the, the nonlinear string stability, even even mathematically, there is no one. I mean, defined. I mean, give a definition. So yeah, what's the spring stability for the nonlinear coupling control if you don't linearize it at all? Or what's the spring stability that for the time varying systems that you can uh, apply? But I mean, this frequency domain approach by this like a generalized if uh, frequency response functions or like the time varying time varying frequency response functions, we can somehow, I mean, imitate or mimic the definitions of the linear time varying systems to give some conclusions on whether it's spring stable or not. Yeah, I think that's also the, the merits of the extension. So yeah, but um, what I presented here is just a basic a thinking and a framework I and mean, try to analyze the frequency domain behavior from a data perspective. Yeah, but I mean, your suggestion is very valuable and I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for your, that's a very valuable research. Yeah, we, we can discuss it further. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much, thanks so much. Um, hi, yeah, maybe I can throw a question here. Yeah. Um, actually, I want to follow up the question from Sui. So for his first question, he's wondering whether we can test uh, all the scenarios. So I think uh, maybe we cannot test all the scenarios, but it's certainly worth trying if we te try to test the test from some small oscillations to large oscillations, because I believe the acceleration or deceleration bounds can play an important role here. So. Of course, for those real cars, uh, due to the engine capability or due to some design ACC system, uh, we can observe their acceleration and deceleration capabilities are limited. So, but I don't think that part has been considered in 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 this in, in the current research. So, I'm wondering uh, by applying this method 
maybe it is uh, necessary to first to to have a bond to to see uh, when we test uh, uh, the interesting scenarios. We test from small oscillations to large and final bounds. So, okay, and that may be the limitation. And beyond that bound, our message might not work very well. Uh, do you think uh, uh, that's valid? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you. So, especially uh, so, the, as I mentioned, that the if directly applying if RF is a linear uh, controllers, which don't doesn't have any like acceleration or deceleration boundary problems because it's linear. Well, uh, the for the nonlinear systems, that definitely we can somehow play with it a little bit. I mean, if you do think, uh, if you have like acceleration or deceleration bound, or you can apply the describing function analysis because you, once you calibrate the acceleration or deceleration boundaries, uh, and I do agree that uh, in this sense, if you want to test the, the acceleration or deceleration boundaries on the strain stability, um, you may need to conduct lots of like uh, experiments for, I mean, to cover more scenarios, which makes this like uh, estimation or data-driven estimation is like a more uh, representative because once the data is like more, contains more scenarios, then it's more representative. Well, the merit of this like research is that uh, it's still like a feature extractions, right? You just is directly extract the frequency domain behavior in a from a, just from a data data I mean perspective in a data way. It's already a, like a feature extraction, so it's not you cannot cover all scenarios. All the estimation accuracies really depends on the how many experiments or what what scenarios this experiment uh, covers but it's, but it's still it's already a feature extraction so in this sense i still think that yes it's not perfect for sure but it's still really like uh it has still gives us some like a very insightful like uh or like phys physical interpretations with respect to the traffic sure. Or situation. yeah sure um, I have another question regarding on the uh, maybe the, the major assumption of this method, which is uh, linear controller. Um, in the very beginning slides, we talk about or you introduced uh, a terminology called uh, linear time invariant systems. Um, yes. I'm wondering, so we we require this, the ACC controller to be linear. Does it mean uh, the parameters are also constant. I mean, the parameters k before the coefficient due to the speed error or distance error before the speed error or the distance error. Yeah. Do you require yeah. those parameters to be constant? Yeah, as I mentioned, yes, exactly. Uh, this is a linear time invariant, which means that for this approach, since you don't have any like a time, as you can see, they don't have any like time index inside. So in this sense, what the, about speed there? Yeah. yeah, I mean time invariant. I totally agree. What about uh, is it also speed invariant system? What well, What do you mean speed invariant systems? Yeah, yeah. I mean a linear controller. The simplest one could be k times delta v, right? Plus k uh, kp times uh, times s. That's okay. Yeah, so those ks kp. A KV, KF, do you require them to be constant or can they be dependent on speed V? Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, in this case, it's constant. Because, because, okay. so if it's, not, if it's not constant, so if it's like, it's either like time varying or it's nonlinear, which which means that the KV may be a nonlinear or like linear functions with respect to the speed. In this sense, it will force into the nonlinear controller. Uh, it, it it may looks like a very nonlinear controllers or like time varying yeah. like controllers. So then this all this will hold for this approach. You can still use this framework to analyze it, but you still need to mm. try to estimate the frequency response functions in a enhanced way. So for example, if it's time varying, you can enhance it by the wavelength based FRF. I mean and if it's nonlinear, then you need to use a generalized FRF or nonlinear output FRF. So 
Yeah, so, if there are others, I mean, the like a uh, like different possibilities or scenarios. Yeah, but as, as I mentioned, that since the research is still ongoing, that's why I didn't have like a very comprehensive results to present today. But I mean, the philosophy wise, that I think uh, if you do this like a generalized FRF or really based FRF, it can cover the problems that you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, can I ask one more? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Feel free. Okay. Okay, I know uh, you guys are experts on MPC controllers. Um, I'm wondering, we have talked a lot, uh, much in about linear controller, and we also know there's a great chance those ACCs are MPC controllers. So, but now we have a lot of data. You mentioned a lot of lots of field experiments. So, my question is, from the data we collected, do you have a guess those data are results? Of linear or MPC, can you tear or, or do you have any <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, though I think it's not that relevant to to this like a uh, uh, presentation, but yeah. yeah, I would I would like to answer it. Uh, yeah. So basically, so uh, as far as I understand, that it is it, it has a great. I mean, it really depends on the manufacturers. So, for example, for very traditional ACC or traditional vehicle manufacturers, they somehow looks like a linear controller. Well, for for example, for Apollo, Baidu, because they already open, they already share their like a source code of the ACC controllers. Maybe you can find it online. Then it is MPC. So. Yeah, yeah, I would like to answer, but I mean, but I cannot answer it in a very rigorous way. But my intuition is that the, I mean, it's, it's largely, it, 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 it's not like a purely linear, but like a multi-region linear or like piecewise linear, let's say. And for like some ACC for like a Apollo, they, they actually they are MPC because they already um, shared the open source code for, for that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's it's like it's more like an open question. Yeah. I yeah. personally, I'm also interested to see what could be the characteristics of an of the data from an MPC controller. If we can find some, uh, that could be our best guess because they they will always be black boxes. Yeah. Yeah. To be mentioned that yeah, actually there's something that I want to add. Actually, in our teams, I mean. Under guidance, Professor Yang, we find a very a very special way to even calibrate the parameters for MPC. You know, because MPC is a, like an optimization controller, right? Really, really hard yeah. to to calibrate it. But uh, yeah, we still find a way to uh, to calibrate the MPC controller. I think this like a, no, I just submit the uh, the paper to, for TRB presentation only. And we'll also submit it uh, to the journal publication very soon. So, I mean, if you like, we can also I mean, share it with you. I mean, how to, sure. <laughs> like, yeah, to calibrate okay. MPC in your systematic way, yeah. Okay. So we look forward to your next presentation on that topic. Oh, no, if I have one, yeah, I'd be glad. <laughs> yeah, Maybe sure. two months Thanks. later, once the, the results are more comprehensive, I would like to. I mean, present something, how to okay. calibrate the MPC, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, any other questions from the audience? So following and your comments, I somehow remember there's a theory called persistent excitation, which corresponds to how much of the data or the characteristic of the data we need to calibrate a model, um, for example, transport function, yeah. And I somehow remember the um the persistent persistent excitation should be at at least um two times the order of the input signal uh, on the model. For example, um typically for ACC system, it's it's either a second order or third order that we need the input signal to have the order of six or four, um in, in order to have a comprehensive understanding about the behavior. So I think maybe we can uh, add this type of validation to 
support that the open ACC data is actually sufficient to recover the um, comprehensive dynamics for the ACC system. And yeah. typically for real world driving, it is because we can treat it as a multiple um, summation of sinusoidal signals and it turns out it's much, much more higher dimension and, and in, in terms of the persistent excitation order. So I think this can kind of also relieve the burden of um, incorporating various types of scenarios during testing and even in developing the trajectories. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think this is a very nice suggestion. Yeah, and we can also like improve, incorporate it. I mean, I mean, since this, as I mentioned, it's ongoing research, so I, I will, I would like you to, I mean, somehow incorporate in the experiment and designs. Yeah, I think this is uh, quite amazing. Yeah. And another point I want to ask is about the um, time delay effects or say the re reaction time of ACC because this method solely um, interpret the ACC system into a linear transfer function. But like for the delay effects, um, for sure we can use like part of um, approximation to, to convert the delay effect into transfer function. But I mean, it's still um, kind of uh, hidden the delay effects into the transfer function. And perhaps the reaction time can also provide us with more insights on this. Yeah, I do agree that the, uh, let's say response functions or time delay, I mean, the response or the time delay is a very key fact, I mean, key factors facing like the commercial ACC. So, yeah. but in this sense, so, cause I, as I mentioned that, yeah, I mean, it is really different approach as I can imagine. Cause you know, it's like we already treat the, um, the controller is a black box, right? It's a it's a black box here. So which means that we don't know any exact knowledge of the of the controller and we don't know what delay it was in. Though but I mean the transfer function generally can it's very great at I mean describing the delay is because it's in frequency domain while well, the delay is basically a shift from a certain signal to another signal, right? So in this sense that the data driven one def definitely can capture the delays by, as you mentioned, very impl impl implicit. Well, I mean, but if you truly want to understand in, I mean, what's a delays in with, for example, actuation delay or like measurement delay, all the stuff, you need to have a model. So in this sense, I think model based approach may be a better like a approach to, to analyze the detailed, I mean, mechanisms of the controller. Yeah, or you can add like much more like a measurement. So it's not necessarily speed of the leading vehicle trajectories or following vehicle trajectories. It's basically, it's, it's, it's doable for any like input output systems in the commercial ACC. Basically, I mean, in fuel experiments, you can also add it I mean, add some measurements that of interest to, I mean, do, during the, the field experiments. And in this sense, you can also get some understanding of, I mean, what a delay looks like um, from the frequency domain analysis. Yeah. Right. So maybe a hierarchical um, framework for, for like, um, we do the delay extrapolation first and then use this type of transfer function estimation technique. It will be making this type of estimation method more accurate because perhaps delay should be one of the most dominating effects during the um, car following on the highway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because you know, uh, yeah, I also read some like a very recently published papers which suggest that there are lots of like the commercial ACCs they are follows the constant time gap policy. In this sense, that we can somehow use some partial knowledge of the controllers, rather than treating as a purely black box. We can also, I mean, treat, treat no, uh, utilize some like a partial knowledge of the controllers and try to contact like a semi like data driven method. I think this is definitely valid and a very great uh, directions to do it. Um, 
for the commercial ACC analysis. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, my my last question is like, uh, do we have any any insights on the um, computational complexity for this method? Like, if we want to use it in in a real time application, try not um, obtain a model from time to time to and even improve the model when we have new trajectory. Does it uh, really applicable? Yeah, yeah. So it, because basically you just need to calculate the all the spectrums and the cross spectrums, which is very mature in the signal processing field, and it's very like very fast computing because because it's basically the Fourier transformation and play with it and some like a weighted average. Basically, it takes like a very less time. Well, as because because by this analysis meaning it focuses on like the analysis, right? So it doesn't really require the online computation stuff, but uh, yeah, because it's only for analysis. But but yes, indeed, this algorithm is very fast computing. Uh, I'm not that sure with respect to the later two, but I believe this one maybe it takes a longer time because it's very complex. So you, uh, due to, I mean, I didn't provide very like a mathematical details of this one. This one is super complex, may takes like more time, but for the wavelength based like FRF, then I think, I still think this is really still like a fast computing. Well, for this one, it's like, uh, you somehow need to tune, I mean, to choose what's a wavelength or like, like a hyperparameters inside the wavelength, et cetera. So, but yeah, I think this, Generic framework in general is like a fast computing, while um, for analysis actually it doesn't really really require the the computational efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, since we are running out of time, I think uh, we can call it. Uh, meeting now uh, and thank you again thank you young and thank you all the audience uh, it's, uh we look forward to seeing you again yeah bye -bye. thank you much thanks so much yeah nice to meet you yeah bye okay. bye, bye.